I recently received a request to show how to pass the elapsed time on an HTML page to another HTML page. I'm always looking for JavaScript problems to include in this channel, so we will be tackling this problem in this tutorial. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. In this tutorial, we will look at a technique for determining elapsed time. And then we will look at techniques for passing that data to a different HTML file. Now, most of the techniques I will use in this tutorial are techniques I have done more in-depth tutorials about. And I will link to those tutorials in the description section. Let's first look at the different ways that can be used to pass data from one HTML file to another. So first off, we can use local storage. Now I've done an in-depth tutorial on this and I will link to that in the description. However, this is one of the techniques I will show in this tutorial as well. I won't describe it in a lot of detail because I've done that in another tutorial, but I will show the technique for doing it. Another way we can do this is using the query string. So in a URL at the end of the domain, many times there'll be a question mark and then there'll be a list of key value pairs separated by the equal sign. That is the query string. And we can use that query string to pass data between HTML pages if we choose to. So that's another technique that could be used. And I'll show that one in this tutorial. Now, index DB. In a way, this is similar to local storage. However, this is much more involved, and you can store a lot more data with index DB. However, it's much more complicated to deal with than local storage. Local storage is pretty simple. I do have a full in-depth tutorial on index DB and I will link to that tutorial in the description section. I won't be showing this as a part of this tutorial as one of the techniques because it is much more involved. So please take a look at that other tutorial if you want more information on index DB. Finally, I don't feel I can leave this page without mentioning single page applications or SPAs. Now, this is a topic that there have been courses created around. So this is not something we can show in a simple tutorial on YouTube. Basically, this is the kind of thing you create with React or with Angular. And this is a way to create a web application. So something on the internet that acts like a desktop application. So in a way, it solves the problem of passing data between pages. Technically, you're not necessarily passing between pages as you're changing views. But I needed to mention that as a part of these techniques. So now here's the scenario we'll use in this tutorial. We're going to open an HTML page. Then at some point, we'll click a button on that HTML page. At the time the button is clicked, we will proceed to a new HTML page that it's linked to. And in so doing, we're going to pass the number of milliseconds that we have been viewing that first page. And then the second page will display those milliseconds. So in that way, we can show that we're passing milliseconds from one page to another HTML page. So here is the first page. And when we're ready, we'll click the button and then the time will show up here. The number of milliseconds will show up in place of time. So that's what we're going to do. Now let me show you what's already been done and then we'll start looking at a couple of techniques to accomplish this. So here's the HTML for that first page. We have our button here. There's the text. And here is the JavaScript that's attached to that. So basically what we're doing is down here, I've added an event listener to look for when DOM content is loaded. So basically when all of the content is loaded, then we will go ahead and call the init function, which is here. Basically all that does is uses query selector to find that button. 
and then we add an event listener to that button and the event is click and where are we going we're going to present 5.html which is in the same directory so this is how we link to the next page right there so that's this page here now as you can see we have this text here is the amount of time that has passed and then we have a span and that's where time is and so we're going to replace the text inside this span tag with the actual millisecond so here's what we've added to that so far as far as JavaScript is concerned once again I'm just using DOM content loaded to make sure the page is loaded before I try to modify anything on the DOM and then in the init function on this page I grab that span tag using query selector there's the ID and then I simply set the inner HTML to time that's what we're doing right now but we're going to change that so we set that to milliseconds so that's what we have set up already now the first technique we're going to look at is using local storage so first let's gather the lapse time the amount of time we're setting on a page so when we first init this page I'm going to create a variable start time and I'm going to set that equal to date object so new date this is what we'll use to keep track of the amount of time we've been on the page then the next part is pretty simple so when the button is clicked we're simply going to use local storage to keep track of the number of milliseconds we're basically going to store those in our browser in local storage so we do that like this set item allows us to set a value to local storage and I'm gonna call it start time so I'm giving it a name to keep track of and then I'm taking the start time variable and what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it to milliseconds if I don't convert it to milliseconds what's going to happen is it will store a string version of the date and so basically show the date written out and I don't want that I want the numbers I want the milliseconds uh, for this start time because then I'm gonna take those milliseconds and subtract them from the end time when I go to the next page and that will give me the number of milliseconds I've been on the page okay so we've assigned that to local storage and this is the name we're using to store that all right I'm gonna go ahead and save that now let's go to the JavaScript in the next page and here's where we want to display those milliseconds so we already have the span tag here now let's get the time in milliseconds or another way to say that is the date in milliseconds for when we arrive at this page so let end times what we're gonna call that equal new date again now let's just figure out what the elapsed time is and then that is what we will put in the span tag so elapsed time is equal to end time once again I'm going to use the get time method of the date object so I can make sure I get milliseconds we're working between strings and numbers here and this works fine in JavaScript because of coercion but just to be safe I'm making sure that I get the milliseconds here because I'm now going to subtract milliseconds which are stored in local storage now those will come back as a string but because of this operator here it will automatically coerce it to a number so local storage dot get item is how we retrieve it and now I'm going to pass in the name which I used to store it which was start time and that will retrieve it and then subtract those two okay and then finally we're just going to take and place that variable here in the inner HTML of the span tag all right let me double check back here make sure I got everything 
we've got it stored we're now removing it let's go ahead and try this one so I'm going to jump here and I'm gonna refresh this so we can start brand new I'm gonna count off a bit just so we have an idea about how many millisecond how many seconds it was so one two three I click this and I've made a mistake here let's see Oh, the right variable there save that again let's try it one more time so I'm going to jump back and refresh one two three and there we have almost three seconds so 2607 milliseconds is what passed so we were able to take the time from the first page put it in local storage and then have it display on the next page when we clicked the button this time we had almost seven seconds okay okay so that was a solution using local storage the next solution I want to include is using a query string so let's jump back we'll go back to that first JavaScript file and now we don't need to use local storage so I'm going to comment that out and what we're going to do is we're going to take the start time and we're going to concatenate it to the end of this page as a query string and then we'll be able to retrieve that once we get to the new page so let's look at how we would do that so I'm simply going to use the concatenation operator and what am I concatenating well first a question mark because that indicates the start of the query string and then start time is what I'm going to call that equal and now what are we adding to that I'm adding to that start time dot get I'll use the get time method again to grab the milliseconds so we're adding that to a query string all right we've appended the milliseconds to the end I'm gonna save that now let's go back to our second page and we're still going to use the end time here but now let's retrieve what the start time is so I'm going to create a new variable here start time and we're going to set that equal to document.location.search that specifies the query string location is the URL dot search is the query string portion of the URL and now we're going to do a dot replace this comes back as a string and so I'm going to do a dot re replace and use a regular expression to remove everything except the value that we want the value from that key value pair in the query string all right so there I'm designating the regular expression and this is the start of the file and then we're accepting most anything prior to the equal sign and then what are we going to replace that with we're simply going to replace that with nothing so two quotes without anything in between now if you're not familiar with regular expressions I would encourage you to take my most recent course on regular expressions in JavaScript I'll include a link to that in the description section with a discount but basically what this regular expression is doing is it's going to take everything in the query string that is not the value and replace it with nothing so what we're left with is the value which are the milliseconds and then I'm going to comment out this elapsed time and we're just going to put the results down here which is basically end time dot get time I'm going to use the get time method again minus start time start time comes back as milliseconds now once again it will be a string but because of this operator it will course it to a number we have a number on the left side it will course the right side to a number and it will take care of that for us and then we'll place it inside of inner HTML so let's go ahead and save that and we're gonna try this again this time using a query string 
So let me go back to the first page. We'll let it go for a few seconds. Then I'm going to click next. Notice 4370. Now it shows up. I'm going to show you the query string here up. So I'm going to move this down a bit. Then if I go across to this right side, right here is the number of milliseconds for that date object. Okay, we've got that right there. So that's what we're pulling out. So basically, it's taking this and then subtra subtracting the number of milliseconds. And that leaves us with 4,370. So that's how that is working. And that's what we're getting here. The end time, we get those milliseconds, and then we're subtracting those milliseconds that were passed using the query string, and that gives us the results, the number of milliseconds that we were on the previous page. All right, so we covered a couple of techniques for passing data from one HTML page to another. We also used the technique for determining elapsed time. And I have a couple tutorials where I've dealt with the date object or determining elapsed time, dates, that kind of thing. And I'll link to those as well if you want to dive into that in more detail. Now before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial on YouTube. And if you want to dive deeply into JavaScript, I provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can also click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for a complete list of tutorials and other resources. Thanks for watching.